Hey, welcome back to the Barrel Proof Baseball Podcast. Today's episode, I am joined by Kara King. Kara is from King's Family Distillery. And this, okay, so I've had a lot of whiskey companies and brands send me some bottles. There was no bigger surprise than when I got a giant box from King's Family Distillery with six bottles, five of them whiskeys, one vodka, which I'm afraid to try because, you know, college, but five of them being whiskeys and I've opened three of them. Two of them I have not quite opened yet, but the ones I've tried are outstanding. Okay. So I got to show you these first before I talk about Cara and, and our conversation. So, so they sent me the rye. Okay. So we've got the rye, which is absolutely delicious. It's a 90 proof. Okay. A weeded bourbon, which is a hundred proof, which is also very delicious. Um, the bourbon, which is outstanding. I'm afraid to drink more of it because I don't want to like it too much and run out of it. Um, but between this and the rye, I'm a big fan. The two that I've not opened yet. One is the, it's called the Ryconic twice barreled five years old, 113 proof. I'm dying to try this. I'm just not ready to open it up just yet because, uh, I just keep reading good things about it and uh, I don't want to don't want to open this just yet. And then the last one is kind of in, in that same category. Uh, it's their single barrel. Uh, this is a 147 proof. So it's a little bit on the husky side. And uh, yeah, like I'm dying to try this. I'm just afraid I'm going to love it so much and I'm going to want to keep buying more of it. So um, in addition to that, I know that people have been posting pictures lately of a, I think it's honey bourbon or honey whiskey. I need to try that. That's going to be a, uh, that's going to be one I got to get my hands on. So I would certainly suggest trying out King's Family Distillery. So for one, um, talking with Cara, our conversation was awesome. She's so cool. Um, she's very knowledgeable. She's just super passionate about making good whiskey. It's their name going on this whiskey and like it's really really good stuff the other one thing i keep seeing is like other people who have tried king's family distillery products mm -hmm. everybody loves it um you just see people online constantly talking about how good their stuff is so everybody is not wrong like there's this is one that i think should be hyped up a little bit more than than it is because it's so good and everybody loves it so get your hands on some of this. I believe if I'm not mistaken, I think that they have fairly wide distribution. Um, we recorded this a little while ago, so I apologize for the delay in getting it out, but yeah, I think the distribution is fairly widespread. And if it is, you need to go online and order this. Um, I, I feel like this is one of those brands that when more people try it, it's going to blow up because it's really, really good stuff. I put this in the same category as a lot of the other brands that I've tried that have some distribution that, you know, people can get their hands on these bottles because it's really, really good stuff. So I would suggest trying it out. I think you should try the bourbon and the rye. Those would be my two that I would jump on right now. The weeded is good. If you like weeded bourbons, get the weeded. Um, but if you're into rye, you're not going to be disappointed by this rye. So Try them both out. Try them all three. Try all of them. Get every one of them. Support Cara King and her family. They're great people. Um, great conversation. I really enjoyed my chat with Cara. It was awesome. Um, so yeah, check this episode out. Buy some King's Family Distillery products. You're really going to like them. I can, I can guarantee it. If not, um, sorry, but you should like it because it's good stuff. Um, click the links below. We've got some sponsors. We've got some people to... Uh, help us out. We've got some ways to support the YouTube channel and some of the other bills, uh, Amazon manscaped check out walk-offs and whiskey. Okay. Those guys are awesome. They've been, uh, super cool. They're doing really great stuff. They're gaining a huge following. Um, they're combining baseball and whiskey. So what could be better than that? Uh, so check them out. Walkoffs and See them on Instagram. Uh, I dig those guys a lot. So check this episode out, Car King, King's Family Distillery. Go buy some whiskey from them too. Enjoy. Okay.
Okay, cool. All right, uh, Cara King, thank you so much for joining me today and uh, take me through some of these bottles that you sent me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I sent you our bourbon, our weeded bourbon, and our rye whiskey. Um, mm -hmm. Those three are pretty solid choices at our distillery in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Um, those are some of our biggest hits. The bourbon being, or the the standard bourbon being our number one bestseller. Um, the bourbon is a 99% corn mash bill with 1% malted barley. It's aged between four and five years um, and it's 87 proof. Some of the tasting notes, I always get like, I get ripe stone fruit. Mm -hmm. I get tobacco notes. Um, what do you, what do you get? Let me try it again. But I okay. tried it. I, when I, was, I was so last night when I was sampling them, I started with the weeded just to kind of. I figured it would be kind of uh, you know a little soft with the with that wheat, maybe a little bit mellow. Um, you know, not knowing like what that mash bill is going to look like, like if it was a high rye bourbon or anything. So it mm -hmm. definitely didn't have that spice, which was really nice. But the tobacco for sure, I got. I mean, yeah, you get like that, that corn, like, um, it's not like, it doesn't crush you with like caramel. I think there's like some caramel in there, but I, I don't get like smoked with caramel by any means. Um, and I think like the easy way out is to say, oh, caramel and vanilla, like, okay. Like those are there, I'm yeah. sure. But yeah, it's, it's yeah, super tasty. It's, tobacco for sure though. Yeah. And there's like, you kind of get some notes of sweet corn in there too. Uh-huh. <laughs> You know, but not in an unpleasant way. It is a huge, like there's, it's an almost all corn mash bill. So, you know, it's, it's a, just a really good drinking bourbon. And there's a reason why it's the best seller at our store. Like it's what, just easy. Is there a reason for like the, such a high corn content, like going to 99? It was just different. Um, we mm. source all of our barrels because I was um, a grain broker that worked with distilleries in my previous life. So I know who does what well, and I know that, you know, it's really hard to um, recreate, you know, it's really hard to recreate that kind of stuff. So instead we curate our barrels and that 99% corn mash bill, I just, it spoke to me. I really liked it. It was different. You know, yeah. it didn't have any rye in it. It didn't have any weed in it. That was the first bourbon we did. Um, and it was just, it tasted just it was pleasant you know Easy. yeah it is yeah it doesn't because what is it 90 proof right no 87 87 so i mean i feel like sometimes you get those really high rye contents like they're trying to just add that spice to it like to kick it up a little bit so it's mm -hmm. interesting like it's not the super high proof but it's like it's not uh dialed up with the rye I really like it because i think you could sip on this all night oh for sure for sure. For sure. So it was 99% corn, 1% malted barley. Malted is that, barley. Okay. And then how about the weeded bourbon? What do you guys do with that? It's 51% corn, 45% wheat, 4% malt. So, um, it's just barely a bourbon with that 51% mm -hmm. corn, pretty high wheat in the mash bill. And then we kick the proof up to a hundred. Cause as you said before, wheat can drink soft. Mm -hmm. But if you can, if you increase the proof, you increase mouthfeel by way of alcohol. And I think it really delivers something unusual um, for a wheat, but it's, it's ultra smooth for a hundred proof. And how long is this one aged? Between four and five years. Yeah, that's definitely, yeah, that, that one, that hundred proof definitely kicks it up. Cause I think yeah. like I'm very, uh, I'm not going to name names, but there's a big brand that has a, uh, a 80 proof bourbon out there that is high rye. And it definitely feels like it's that rye is trying to mask the, um, the low proof. And so like, I think of some of the weeded bourbons, like when you think of, you know, a, like a Weller or even like a maker's mark or something like that, like it just, I don't know, there's something lacking. So that, I, I love it. kicked up to that hundred proof. I think it's really yeah. nice. It's, it's a good sipping, bur you know, that one for us in our store, it's for the more experienced bourbon drinker. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's not someone looking for like bourbon just for a bourbon. They're looking for something a little more specific um, and it's earthy in the most pleasant way. I'm not usually a weeded bourbon drinker, but this one is really, I think, because the water that we use when we proof down our barrels is um, we felt we have a proprietary filtering system. So it's, it, it just it makes the spirit shine. Mm. Um, so it's, I just, I really like that we did. It's. So, mm-hmm. Is that a, is, I mean, it seems like a super high wheat content. Is that, I mean, most weeded bourbons aren't that high in wheat, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think makers is, I think Weller and Blanton's is yeah. on par with that. I think, I mean, I, I don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it is, but. But yeah, that that malted barley you can taste you can taste a little bit of that. You can taste that cereal note in there too. Yeah, just barely. What? So you're the water, the processing. That's that's your mm-hmm. thing. That's a proprietary thing for you guys specifically. Yeah, for our distillery. So, so how, my husband. How does that? Work? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, tell me about it. Oh, <laughs> uh, my husband was the master distiller at uh, Tennessee's first legal moonshine company. And so he has done everything from, and that's how we met. We met through whiskey through at a convention, funnily enough, but, um, through, through that job, he was able to, um, he was able to kind of learn on the fly, uh, all this chemical engineering of water and flavors and things like that. So, you know, we do have these flavored whiskeys, which, you know, those, those are fun for some, but I'm more into the bourbons um, myself, but you know, he does have all this background in water and water filtration. So he's able to, you know, manipulate water to really make a spirit shine, Hmm. whether it be bourbon, whether it be gin, whether it be vodka, so when you, so you're sourcing your, your barrels from somewhere mm-hmm. when that, when you guys get those, do you, do, do you get the barrels themselves? And then you guys are the ones to proof the water through like your filtration system and do all that. Or does it come like ready to be bottled? We, we get the barrels in and we get whatever we're bottling in, in bulk. So like if, if we're doing a bourbon, we get those barrels in those physical barrels full of whiskey Mm-hmm. into our our distillery and um we proof it we proof it down if we're going to flavor it we flavor it if we're you know whatever we're going to do with it we do the rest of it in-house hmm. wow. so you have a uh, a lot going on over there in terms of trying to get your proof right and because again like so you're taking the bourbon right that's ready to roll and then proofing it down and adding the, like because it's fruit right like you have a blackberry apple right so is it the- yeah we add natural flavors we we try to stay as natural as possible mm-hmm. so like our blackberry we use blackberry juice and then we use we use cane sugar to sweeten all of our flavors because for us it just the mouthfeel is better mm-hmm. or is the best of all the sweeteners on the market we just sure. like cane sugar in it so um so for our blackberry you know it's just as simple as whiskey blackberry juice sugar nice so you're not going to super artificial. So it tastes, uh, fake we'll say. Correct. It yeah. tastes as natural as we can. Yeah. And you're doing, you're using the bourbon with that. Like those are the ones we, you're flavoring? Use, we use a two year whiskey and then flavor that. Okay. Nice. Um, all right. Tell me about this rye. Cause I know I was watching something on, I think you guys were, I forgot who it was on. Is this one, this is your go-to, right? The rye. hundred percent. It's yeah. my favorite. <laughs> okay. It's, so tell me, tell me about like this rye. Great. Um, it's a 51% rye mash bill. So just barely a rye. Um, it's 45% corn, 4% malt. It's 90 proof. So it's very balanced, very mild for a rye. Mm-hmm. You're going to get all those rye flavors. You're going to get the licorice. You're going to get the pepper. You're going to get, but you're also going to get some sweet notes too. You're going to get a little bit of cinnamon. You're going to get some, some of that caramel, that real soft, yeah. subtle caramel to it as well. So what I like about this particular mash bill is that it's versatile. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not all rye. Rye can tend to be like a 95% rye can, can have, 
you know, some off notes to it, depending on age, depending on barrel. Mm -hmm. I think the corn really plays nicely and mellows that rye in a way that helps it, helps balance it out, you know? It definitely finishes sweet. I mean, it's got a nice spice to it, but it finishes sweet. I had a, like, I w- so I'm fairly new to rye. Like, I just haven't, my first experience with rye was not good. Um, I'm not going to name names, but it wasn't good. Um, and so since then, like, I've had a couple, and I really like them now. But I kind of, like, I started with a Rittenhouse rye. And, like, the same thing, like a 51%. But that was so short. Like, it gave you that rye flavor, but it was super short. Like, this is way, like, this has way more flavors. Like, there's way more complexity to this than even, like, a Rittenhouse. You know, and we try to keep our, those three skews in particular aged between four and five years, because that seems for us to be the sweet spot where we have, you know, where everything seems to really come out well, Mm -hmm. you know, we haven't really had anything, you know, we haven't had a barrel that's been off at all. And if we were to get a barrel, that's off, we'll just blend it into some new, you know, we have an American blended whiskey that we do specifically for that reason. Mm. Um, but you know, we, everything we do is true single barrel as well. So we dump a barrel, we proof it down and we bottle that barrel. Yeah. I noticed you have the, like the handwritten batch numbers on all of these. It's pretty cool. I kind of dig that. Yeah. Brittany did that. Nice. <laughs> it really is a mom pa operation. Like it's myself, Justin, my husband. And then we have a few employees, but you know, we all kind of work together toward the same goal. That's sweet. Now are you guys like your the vodka's gins? Are you guys making that there? Or is that something you guys are sourcing nope. out? Source that too. The gin we do bathtub style. So that is really ours. So the botanical, like we put the botanicals in a giant basically a giant tea bag. And then we have a huge 50 gallon, you know, Mm. drum that we put the neutral spirits in and we just let it sit till, till literally it's done, like till it tastes good. So that's one that we do in house, but we all, we've started with the base spirits from elsewhere just because it's, you can get such clean spirits for so, and for so inexpensive for us. And for me having the grain background, I, I did work, I worked with major companies um, for, with rye, but I also worked with, uh, small distilleries. So I, I understand the cost breakdown between bulk and, um, and like 50 pound bags, for example, Mm -hmm. and how much, how much extra cost that brings to your final product. So for us, like a vodka, vodka really shouldn't run much over $20 in my opinion, in my opinion. Right. Sure. Um, so our vodka, it's 20 bucks in store and it's awesome. Like it's yeah. super clean. So that's cool. I mean, I think it's, I think, okay. First of all, I think any, every, everybody that likes bourbon or whiskey's always had that moment where you're like, Hey, we should start a whiskey company. Like how cool would that be? Um, so how did you guys like actually, like, how'd you pull the trigger and do it? Honestly, I was I don't want to say dragged along kicking and screaming, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you were kind of, <laughs> but it was one of those things where I, I would always tell people don't ever start a whiskey distillery. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Kind of like how, like I'm originally a Minnesotan. You would always hear people with pools tell other people don't ever get by a pool. Cause it's just throwing away all this money. Right. I would tell people don't ever start a distillery because it, it just, it was hot. It's hard to navigate um the legal landscapes depending mm-hmm. on where you live and those are ever changing um it's hard to navigate the distribution world especially with such crowded such a crowded shelf such crowded shelf space um and so but when my husband he finally looked at me and said you know what we we just have to do it and we we were actually driving past the building that we're in now and there was a vacancy no, no sign or anything, but, um, he, my husband ended up calling the landlord and asking if it was for rent. And they said, yeah. And the price was right. And, you know, they, so we kind of started the ball rolling there. It was, you know, kind of a shot in the dark, 
but we figured of anybody in the business and the craft world between he, he and myself, we have enough knowledge where it would be really hard for us to not at least be able to make a living. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, that's kind of why we did it. You know, I was kind of at the tail end of my career in the grain world, you know, I'd had a kid, I didn't want to travel anymore. He was, you know, he still works a day job, but you know, he was kind of just, he's, he, he has to keep busy all the time. So he needed, Mm -hmm. he needed to get back into it, you know? So, I mean, that's really where it started. It was just kind of a, well, I guess this is what we're doing now. (laughs) I mean, that's like, it's so cool. How everybody I've talked to, like they say the same thing. It's like, well, we kind of made the decision and we just said, yeah, like, let's go. And then it's that process of, like you said, like the legal side and the paperwork and permitting and, you know, just the legal stuff that has to be done that it sucks to do, but like obviously has to be done. Um, Once you did that, once you've decided and you started it, you got the process, like, how do you get into uh, deciding where you're going to go and get your whiskey from? Like, I know you said you had a background in and it with the grains, but like, how do you make that decision of where you're going to get it and what kind of mash bills that you guys want to go? Like, is it just a nonstop trial and error and let's see what we like? Yeah, it really was a not, it was a nonstop trial and error of what's available, what's well-priced, what ages do we like? Um, because I had been within that world, I knew, I know the brokers who broker barrels. I know. And I mean, they go back with my family for years and years. Mm. Um, and then I know the companies that sell direct as well, cause I used to sell them grain. Um, so having, having those connections already really helped. And also, you know, I had connections in the label world and in the glass world. So really for us, the, the, a lot of the research part of it was cut out because mm-hmm. we had already lived the research. So, um, when we were deciding on mash bills, for example, I wanted something that I, not that I hadn't ever tasted before, but something that I didn't taste often. So that's where we came up with those three products that we have. Um, We have other products as well. We have like a Tennessee bourbon, we have a double barreled rye, we have um, a single barrel American white or American light whiskey. So, you know, we just try to do things that that I know will, that we know will sell and that we know we like, and that we know our friends in the bourbon world, like what's the, what's the Tennessee bourbon? Is that, what's the difference? Is there like a Lincoln County process with that? Or is it just, what's the difference there? No, it's actually, it's a Tennessee style mash bill without the Lincoln County process. So I bought it actually from a broker. It's, it's distilled in middle Tennessee, um, but it was aged in Memphis So it has these unusual weather swings compared to what's aged in middle Tennessee in that, like just South of Nashville, it's just a different climate. So it's just a really interesting bourbon. And then we, we kept it at cast strength because it was like perfect at cast strength, like Hmm. rich. It has these nutty notes to it. I'll send you a bottle. It's really quite delicious. Okay. Yeah. That sounds really cool. I want to try that one out. The, I, I got so interested like that for some reason, I don't like flavored stuff by any means, but like the, that apple like sounds so interesting. I don't know what you do with it, but I, it's super intriguing. Like it's, it's it just sounds good. Like how's apple whiskey? It's not good. Really good. Yeah. It's really good. Um, we drink it a lot in the fall. Mm. Um, it's great with cinnamon tea. Um, mm. And I really enjoy it also with like just ginger ale. I've put a splash in diet Coke before. I'm not a fancy lady. I mean, I just put stuff in, I just put things in diet Coke sometimes. So <laughs> try it out. It's good. <laughs> there you go. I love it. It's the, the, that 14 year that's uh was like 141 proof. Is that right? 147. That? Yeah. 147 one. Yeah. yeah that's that's right. I, is that barrel number five? Yeah barrel it's batch nine batch nine yeah really okay yeah batch nine yeah that one is 147 proof but it's a it's an american light whiskey and light whiskey is aged in used bourbon barrels so you'll get um you'll get some notes from what was in there before and it won't be as um 
I guess it, you can't taste as much char, which I, I oh, okay. think it needs to be aged longer. That's why it needs to be aged longer, but it doesn't drink 147 proof. It's actually pretty dangerous because you will get a lot of heat from it, but you get uh-huh. so much flavor as well. You know, there's, you get the caramel, you get, I, I'm not sure if that was the one that had smoke notes to it, but sometimes mm. they come out almost like a scotch. So it's like peaty, not like an unpeated scotch. Okay. Like, but like that smokiness of a scotch. Hmm. Interesting. So, yeah. How did you, how did you get into whiskey yourself? Did you just always enjoy it? Like, were you just always a fan of whiskey? Well, my, my dad had asked me, do you want to be a part of the family grain firm? And I was just pushing papers in you know, a corporate job. And I was like, yeah, I get to travel. I get to drink whiskey. I get to learn about it. That sounds great. So that's how I really got into it. Um, my first favorite whiskey that I ever had was um, Four Roses Small Batch. And I still love Four Roses Small Batch. Yeah. Um, it's just a solid drinking yep. whiskey. Um, and then I've kind of from there, I've moved more into the rye world. So like I like probably anything between a 10 and a 12 year, like Smooth Ambler did. Um their old scout that was yeah. uh, was it a, an mgp 12 year i think it was this is a while ago too like mm-hmm. i they oh. ran out of barrels of it and they it, like it's no longer and i think i don't even think we still have a bottle of it because it was just that good you could just drink it you know it was so good um but yeah that one i i kind of stepped into the rye world and kind of have been there ever ever since but yeah, the, this I'm really interested in this rye conic. What's what is that one all about? What what's the difference between that and the regular rye? It's twice barreled. So oh, really? the rye conic is going to be five years. The first four years were in a new charred white oak barrel. Mm. Then it was switched to another new charred white oak barrel. So it gives it a totally different flavor. It is a 95% rye, but that second barreling takes a lot of that like punch out of it mm. so it but i would only drink it neat i i think it needs to just uh, be neat you know no ice no cocktail don't try any of that it's just meant to be neat i think i i like rise in cocktails better than like weeded bourbons for example like i really i like to have that spice like if i'm gonna go like i'll be honest if i'm gonna have a old-fashioned it's probably gonna be more than like one shot typically um, so I do, I do like having that rye and that spice, like kind of holds up really nicely in the, in the old fashions, but like some of the really good ryes, like I don't want to put them in an old fashioned. Like I just want to enjoy them. Cause like I said, I'm new to the, I'm kind of new to the rise, but like, I'm really digging them so far. Yeah. I, I would tend to agree. I think a rye is much better in an old fashioned and a man per, for me, it's much better in a Manhattan and I'm not, I'm not a Manhattan person. Mm-hmm. They're not my favorite drink, but I would rather drink one with rye just because I think the rye brings more depth to a Manhattan. Yeah. Cause otherwise to me, it just drinks too. It's too sweet. Yeah. I guess sure. it's kind of like, like mint julep too sweet. Can't do it. I know we're in derby season, but can't do it. <laughs> oh, that's right. We don't, we don't have derby season in Arizona, unfortunately, but I think we should like make it a thing out here. Um, I think yeah, probably, you should. I don't see why not. Yeah. I think the United States should all do derby season wear big hats wear ridiculous clothes kentucky derby is quite the uh event so how fun is that i mean because you guys are in, you're in tennessee right like yeah and i've been to the kentucky derby twice now and both times and it was through my former job that i i was able to do it um but and it was it's like the most exciting minute and a half because <laughs> it's they just go once around the track yeah. you know like but there's two hundred thousand people God. watching these horses run once around a track okay it's fun i mean like like the build up of a yeah, well yeah that's probably that probably helps because it's like you know down south i mean you're an sec country so like an sec football game is coming up like it's exciting i mean you can tailgate all day and you know get to the game and probably feel pretty good and then you know the game happens but it's still over three hours long like you're literally talking about a minute and a half and everybody gets all riled up for it it seems that's that's such a great idea yep 
it's it's pretty absurd, but it's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. So you guys have like you guys have a really big line of like offerings. I mean, I, I you see a lot of like I would say craft distilleries or like family owned distilleries that are coming out and they're you know offering one or two like offerings. You guys have a very wide variety of things that you guys are putting out. Um, how and why? Like, yeah, I'll leave it at that. How and why? Well, because we're sourcing our spirits, that part of it, the distillation part is taken out of it. Mm. Excuse me. Um, and, and the why that's how, and why Mm. we're located in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, which is right next to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. So we Mm. get about 12 million visitors per year through our tiny little County to visit things like Dollywood, Gatlinburg. There's there's so many attractions here. It's, it's vacation wonderland. It really is. Wow. And we're within a day's drive of, oh, like a third of the country's population. So you think about the metro areas that are close to East Tennessee, you have mm-hmm. Atlanta, you have yeah. Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, you can get here from DC in a day. You can get here from Louisville, Cincinnati, Indianapolis. I mean, just if you start drawing that line around, we get that many visitors. So with that many visitors means you get a lot of repeat business and people who will come back for what you have. Right. And people who want to taste a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Um, and also we're in moonshine country where you can get anything from like sour gummy worm flavored moonshine, to, I don't know, like they've got moonshine pickles and moonshine cherries and moonshine, you know, everything that you could think of that you could flavor alcohol with, they're doing it and they're doing tastings of it. So for us, that's why we put out lots of products mm-hmm. is to just keep the, keep the people who come back to see us every year, um, interested, you know, I, I think you had me sold on the, the sour gummy bear moonshine. That sounds incredibly good. Like it's, Sour Patch Kid moonshine. Basically, it's I'm just in. like <laughs> alcoholic Sour Patch Kids. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, who doesn't want that? Right. It sounds. I mean, it sounds like you guys are in a great spot. And like, what can so if, can people come and visit you guys? Like, can they come and like check out you guys physically? Like in a in your own place, your own distillery. Oh yeah, we're. One of us is almost always there. Either myself or my, or Justin are almost always there. Um, but yeah, we're located right outside of Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. So if you're in the Great Smoky Mountains region, you can come stop by. We're open seven days a week. We do free tastings. Um, and you can pick up any one of our uh, offerings out in, in the gift shop. Um, we are distributed online as well. Um, it's through our website, www.kingsfamilydistillery.com. Um, and from there you can get almost all of our offerings. We're out of a few SKUs right now, but they're on their way. Um, and then we are also distributed throughout East Tennessee. So I like online, you guys have a really good like online platform to be able to order. I mean, there's a lot of places that don't have that. It's crazy, but you guys can get most stuff out to most places, right? Yeah. Like 30 States. So uh, including, you know, your state of Arizona. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately I can't do Tennessee or, I mean, it all has to do with state, uh, state level politics, but we luckily enough, we hooked up with a great distributor out of California. So that is where those products ship from because they have all these relationships with other States. So interesting. Well, I I hope, I think people will start to order some stuff. I'm going to definitely hopefully get the word out a little bit because this is, it's really good. Like it's really good whiskey. I mean, it's not like, I think people, they want to find new, like new brands to try out especially if they try it out, like this is really good stuff. Like that rye being at 51%, I think is really a nice like entry into rye. And it's also a really good rye. Like, yes, you might want to hold off on the 95% on the rye conic before, you know, maybe if you're not into it, like maybe try the rye first at 51% before you go to the 95, but like, it's a really good rye. And like the bourbon is really, really good. I think people, our, dig you it. know, our, our goal really was just to create, some great 
everyday drinking products so that when people are reaching for a bottle, when they want a cocktail or a drink, Mm -hmm. they just naturally reach for Kings Sure. because it's just good. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with making whiskey. That's just good whiskey. (laughs) It's a good good thing. I, okay. So before I let you go, I am curious because when I, when I went on the website, I saw that Justin had gotten into moonshine in quote, less than legal ways. Um, I, that was so intriguing because like, I will say my, one of my favorite memories of coaching baseball, what, and I'm not gonna say where I was at, but we were playing at the university of Tennessee and somebody knew somebody and like, we pulled our bus over and a dude got on our bus and handed our, one of our coaches, a Brown bag with like five Mason jars of moonshine. And it was like, it was the shadiest thing I've ever been a part of, but it was so awesome. And it was so good. So I want to know if that, A, I want to yeah. know if that was Justin that gave us the moonshine because it was outstanding. B, like how explain the less than legal ways. Cause that is awesome. Well, moonshine was used as medicine and currency up through like the 60s, 70s and 80s here in East Tennessee. They've, they've always been a little bit behind when it comes to technology and not anymore but like previously they you know they they were slow to get power into the area they were slow to get you know indoor plumbing things like Mm -hmm. that um and so they used uh moonshine as currency and as medicine and justin actually learned from his grandmother in her kitchen like no joke like from his mama i believe is what he calls her (laughs) <laughs> That's <is> incredible. <laughs> I know you, it was just, I, I have no idea how he and I ended up together. Me being from the suburbs of Minneapolis and him being from like literally the hollers of East Tennessee, but mm-hmm. it works. <laughs> yeah. Whatever works. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. You, and you guys have a moonshine though, right on your website. We do. We have a locally, uh, a local guy's recipe that um, he does in our store. And then we age it for three months in a bourbon barrel. So to put Mm. our spin on it. So it's like a bourbon flavored moonshine. So it's going to be sweet on the front, like a bourbon. And then it's going to burn like a moonshine going down because it's 131 proof. Oh, okay. Sounds Mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Too many of those sound, uh, sound worth trying out. So I think those are, uh, those are (laughs) pretty exciting. Awesome. What do you, uh, what's in the future for you guys? Like, what are you, you know, what are you hoping for? You know, whether it's with, uh, whiskeys you're putting out or spirits you're putting out or expansion or like what, what's, what's there to, uh, look ahead to for you. (sighs) Well, right now we're just finishing up an expansion of our tasting room into, um, so we've doubled the size of that, which is awesome because we can employ a couple more people. We can taste more people on our stuff. Um, and then as far as products go, I think we're going to step into the cream world. So we're going to do a, a cream flavored product, but that'll be probably more toward the second half of the year. Um, and we want to do a flavored rum as well. So, and I think that one's going to come out in a month or two, as soon as I can get every, all the ducks in a row for that. What, uh, if you can say what kind of flavored rum or can you like, it's like a, I I can say, yeah, it's fine. It's like a, (laughs) a coconut. It's like a toasted coconut pineapple. So it's like that tropical, you know, there are big names out there that are like it, but this is just so far beyond in flavor. Like Justin's flavor chemistry really sings in this project. It's so good. Like I'm not a rum person and this sure. stuff is like, I could just put it on ice and drink it. It just tastes like, it tastes like I'm on the Island of St. Thomas without a care in the world. Uh, okay. So I gotta, I have to check back on the website for that, that release. Cause I will say like we went, the first time I was in the Dominican Republic and we, we opened up a coconut and poured rum into the coconut and put a couple of ice cubes in there and drank out of it. Like for one, I don't think it gets any cooler than that, but for two, like the taste of it was just amazing. So like that has to be incredible. Yeah. This, I think this project's going to be really fun, you know, cause we get people coming into the store asking for things like that rum cream, that kind of stuff. So we're just trying to cater to what the people want. What kind of, like a bourbon cream, like like what kind of cream? 
it'll be along those lines. Yeah. yeah. Where I think we're still settling on a flavor profile for it. Okay. Um, so we'll, but that will probably be t- more toward a, when the cooler weather starts. Gotcha. So. We don't know what that's like in Arizona. We're, I know. <laughs> we're already at a hundred. We're a hundred on Easter. So like, oh. Well, I was cool. there a couple of weeks ago. I was, my mom lives right outside of Phoenix. Okay. She lives on superstition mountain. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were there and it like the morning that we, the first morning we were there, it was, there was snow on the mountain and it was just magical. Wow. It had been years since I had seen that. Yeah, we had, yeah, we had, it was really weird. We had like a couple of days, like a little bit of weather came in and I know just like an hour and a half North of us got a lot of snow. Mm-hmm. And then Easter Sunday, it was like 99. Going, this is, it seems a bit early to be that hot. So we'll only be there for the next eight months and then it's going to cool down into the eighties and we're good. Yeah, that's it. That's all. I mean, you just oh. have eight months. That's cool. <laughs> eight months, eight months of like your heads in an oven or a hair dryer is on you. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. exciting. But it's a dry heat. No, I'm kidding. I'm totally that's, kidding. That's the go-to. That's <laughs> the go-to line of Arizona. Like it's a dry heat and. It is, but if anybody holds a hair dryer in front of your face, like that's still not comfortable. No, and when it doesn't get below ninety degrees at night, oh. that's awful. Like it's no. awful. I don't care how dry it is; it's still hotter than an oven, so it's not yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, where are you guys at on social media? Where can people find you? For one, social media, and then tell me again the website because that way people can go online and order directly from you guys. Yeah, perfect. Uh, we are King's Family Distillery at, on Facebook. We are at King's Family Distillery on Instagram. We have a Twitter, but we don't use it, so don't bother. And uh, our um, website is www.kingsfamilydistillery.com. So Instagram, best way to get in touch? Yeah, Instagram. Follow. Uh, Instagram and Facebook. Okay. All right, we're gonna we're gonna push it because, like I said, I, I I really like the whiskey and I really appreciate everything you sent me. I'm super excited to try these out. I'm going to try the ginger vodka, even though I've not gotten into vodkas, um, but I think that ginger is going to be really good in there. Flavored vodkas are yeah. I would just just try it. Just try All right, it. So, <laughs> put it, so put put in the fridge, right, yep. and then add lime. You said. Yes. Okay. I'm in. Cool. Cara, I appreciate it. Thank you again for the bottles. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, I, I apologize for pushing it off. I, I had to make sure I could you know, get home. Uh, don't worry about uh, it. Hold on. Just like, Max, can you go <laughs> right down? Just a minute. Why? No worries. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your yes. time. And I appreciate all the support. And yeah, Definitely. watch us and we'll. I'll send you, I'll send you something cool. All right. I'll be, I'll definitely try it out. I appreciate cool. it. Thanks. Take care. Thanks, Cara. Bye. See ya.